300 million dollars give me 0.005 percent of that whatever number that is i'm okay with it what is going on my lovely friends candace b here thank you so much for coming to my channel i always appreciate it and i hope you guys are doing well i hope you have been having an amazing week so far mind your business if you see that i'm in the same shirt that i was wearing in my last video i'm just trying to be productive okay i'm trying to be consistent on YouTube <laughs> and I'm gonna be traveling this week so I want to make sure I have some content for you guys so by the time you're watching this video it's my 30th birthday so happy birthday to future Candace you old girl you old but that's okay we are happy we're healthy we're grateful we are loved and all the good stuff so yeah today I wanted to do a reaction video um, somebody asked me about my opinion on the whole my forks funds crazy situation and if I'm being a hundred percent honest I have not looked too much into it I've seen people post about it and I know there was some sort of huge fraud thing that went on and I know there was a lot of like legal issues that came into play and I know people lost their money and there was a lot of uproar but I haven't really like taken the time to research it so we're gonna do a reaction video I'm actually gonna be watching a video by the guys over at earn your leisure um, and hopefully they can break down the situation for us um, well for me because I'm sure if you're watching this you might might have already heard about it um, or you're looking for more information just like myself and the video that we're watching today is called my forex funds 300 million dollar fraud that's insane 300 million dollars give me 0.005 percent of that whatever number that is i'm okay with it okay give me that money and i'm fine i mean not the fraud part just just the money part okay just just the clean money <laughs> but yeah i feel bad man i feel bad that people lost money because of this like that's insane and i know it's because of greed i already know i already know that's where it came from greed and being shady but let's watch this video and see what these dudes have to say and we'll go from there did a little research on it and so uh yeah. let's just let's just break this down a little bit further so the cftc is the commodity futures trade commission for those who are not in the know my forex was founded in november of 2021 they have a 2021 we're in 2020 you're a two-year oh my gosh I feel so bad for anyone who who went and took these challenges with this company. Two years? You got to be around longer, man. What the heck? It's a fly-by-night company, literally. 135,000 customers and have taken yep. in over $310 million. Well, yep. how? If they weren't funded. Here's how. Right? The complaint alleges that the trader's global activity uh, actively minimizes the likelihood that customers trade profitability by using pretext uh terminating customers accounts misleading assessing commissions that reduce customer account equity and secretly they use specialized software to cause customer orders to be executed at worse prices than appeared to the customer at the time of the order and this is crazy and handicapping the extreme small number of successful customers to decrease customer profits and increase customer losses so the more you yeah. lose the more they're going to make. In fact, they're making sure that you lose by putting it in your order at a worse price compared to what the actual number is. Mm -hmm. So they've also said that anyone offering and entering inter-leveraged retail Forex contracts without registration, so they're not even registered, which is yep. crazy. Yeah, we talk about red flags, not registered, or offering or entering into leveraged retail commodity contracts. Wait, did he say they were registered or they weren't? Sorry, let me go back. Mm -hmm. So they've also said that anyone offering and entering Enter leverage retail forex contracts without registration, so they're not even registered, which is yep, crazy. crazy. We talk about red flags, not registered, or offering or entering into leverage retail commodity contracts off exchange is acting in clear violation of the law. So that's the report from the C, uh, FTC. So there's no way you're going to win. No, right? This is when we talk about retail investors and we talk about uneducated investors. These are some of the things that they're looking for. To have 135 people in there in a fund that's unregistered is it sounds see, you can tell that this company was literally preying on individuals who, let's say, may be new to trade. Because here's the thing: with back when I started trading, like this, these prop firms were I personally did not hear about them at all. I I to like recently, like two two and a half years ago like i did not hear about prop firms so like nowadays it's like okay these prop firms see that the issue of trade with traders is that they don't have enough capital or they don't 
have the patience enough to save up enough of their capital and, and invest it into the forex market and whatnot. So, okay, let's let's pretend to give money to them, all huge numbers, you know, that they may have never seen in their life. And um, let's like, you know, let's get them to buy our our challenge and do the challenge and this and that, and then we can fund them. But see, this is the type of stuff that like they are preying on those individuals who probably don't know much about how the the world of forex or trading works. Like that's just crazy to me. I'm trying to wrap my mind around the fact that there was did he say 135,000 people? I mean, obviously not all of them were new people, but like man, yo, prop firms got to be careful. I I just hate that cuz I know that a lot of them were we're just like, we're literally probably new traders just trying to get funded because they thought that was the right way to go. And they probably saw it on social media. And then this happened. Sounds almost unbelievable, but we see it yeah. more than we, more than, than not. And probably only two to three percent of the people are winning. Um, and then, I mean, that'll bring us to the, the red flags portion. If you don't know anyone that has worked with a prop firm for two or three years and they haven't had funding, like as big as Forex is. I never knew 40 people that got funded and kept their liquidity. Yeah. There's no easy capital. Like if someone says, Hey, I'm gonna give you $900,000. If you pass an evaluation for 200 bucks, more than likely it's not legit. This is what, yo, facts, facts. Cause if you really deep it, if you really deep it, someone's willing to not know you, this this company, they don't know you from nowhere. They don't know who you are, but they're willing to give you their capital, six figure capital. And all you have to do is, is you know, pay a couple hundred dollars for this little account. And oh, we'll give you your money back as well if you pass, you know, the challenge. And then and we'll also give you six figures of our money. But we don't know you. We, come on now. It's too good to be true. If it's too good to be true, it probably is. That literally applies to everything in life, not even just trading. But this goes to show, like, we have to stop and think because, I, hey, even I was, a, I'll admit, I, not, I'm not gonna say I was a victim of prop firms because with my prop firm experience, I was lucky enough to get my challenge money back and make a little profits. And then I just kept it moving. Like I just, you know, I just decided to continue trading my own account with my own money. But like, I know that a lot of people, they don't have that benefit. It's a, it's a blessing to be able to save up money and put money into an account and like adequate enough money too. You know what I mean? But if it's too good to be true, it probably is part of trading is that process, that beginning process of having to save the money or put it aside or, you know, figure out how much to deposit into your account. Like it's, in my opinion, that's a part of the process. Getting this fast money, all of a sudden, like, you gotta be careful. You gotta think, think like, what is this? What does this really mean? Like if trading was, if, if it was this easy, wouldn't all, wouldn't everyone be trading? Wouldn't everyone be successful traders? Like, ah, man, this this is bothering me. It's making me upset. Okay, so we're just going to watch this quick video by Raja Banks, and it's entitled MFF Shutdown Prop Firms Regulation is Here? Question mark. So let's see what uh, Rakil has to say about this situation. We all know why we're here, right? Um, the prop firm industry is going through, I think this is the start of a huge overhaul where the regulators come in and they start to look at every detail on how these things are run. Now, we're not gonna talk about um, like, you know, what's supposed to happen or, or, or what will happen. I'm just gonna go over some simple facts and I'm just gonna go over how the US government, the Canadian government, the UK, how they all function when they start to investigate one company and how it trickles down in effect that ultimately affects the entire industry as a whole. Now, my Forex funds, they release a statement saying that yesterday without prior notice or discussion, a provincial securities regulator in Canada, which Ontario and the commodities regulator in the US. So Canada and US, they basically worked together without prior notice. They stopped um, them to access their own funds, right? So, so uh, the orders preventing us from trading securities or accessing funds in our bank accounts. What does this mean? This means that the regulator in the US 
and the regular in Canada, they joined hands and without prior notice, they froze their bank accounts. What does that mean? Does that mean you're going to get your payouts? Absolutely not. Oh, shoot. So people didn't even get their payouts. Well, yeah, that makes sense. Like if it just shut down. Damn, that sucks. Imagine you had like a $10,000 payout that you were. Oh, that sucks. That really, really sucks. Let's see. Until these freeze orders are lifted or modified, our business is effectively and at least temporarily frozen. So until these um, freeze orders are taken away, which will, which is not going to happen anytime soon. It's gonna, it's not going to happen in a month. It this, as far as I know, and as far as I understand how this whole thing works when it comes to both finances and all that, and regulators and litigations, this will be at least a year from now. It's not going to get released anytime soon. We will be reaching out to regulators on to discuss their concerns and the first court date to determine whether the freeze orders should be lifted or modified is currently scheduled for September 11 in the U.S. So remember, right, the company is registered in Canada, my first funds, right? They're registered in Canada. I didn't even know that. They're registered in Canada? Yo, y'all, why y'all gotta, why you why guys gotta bring Canada into it? Man, I did not know that. Wow. Canada. But the court date... The main one is at least going to be in the U.S., so you're still not safe, right? With another hearing later that same week in Canada, right? So first in Canada, then you got to go to the U.S. How can you fight to regulate? We hope to have this matter resolved as soon as possible and we'll update this message as the events occur. Now, here's what's going to happen, right? At least for my forex funds, I mean, I can just shed some light on what's going to happen now. What's going to happen now is that once these court hearings start, so so whenever you go in, so for people who don't know what happens when you go in court, I'm sure a lot of you watching right now, you know exactly what happens in a court. When you go in court, you're basically undressing yourself of all moral, financial, ethical values, right? They basically want to look at you transparently and they want to see exactly, okay, we want to know exactly how you're running your business. This is what a court hearing is, right? When you go to court, they, they will want to know your KYC, how many clients you have, right? How many of those clients have you done KYC for, right? Next, they, they would want to know all your operations, where your bank accounts are, where the money's coming from, who's sending you the money, how are you getting this money, right? Next, they would want to know who your technology provider is, right? Who's giving you the technology? If you have liquidity, okay, who's giving you liquidity, right? Why are they giving you liquidity when we saw what you're doing is we think it's not right? Why are they giving you liquidity? And then they're going to get to those liquidity providers and they say, hey guys, what made you give liquidity to this company and who else are you giving liquidity to in Canada? Did they really think they were going to get away with this? Like, honestly, I I'm just thinking like whoever, whatever group of fools were on this team or on this, like in this company, heading this company, did you guys really think that you were going to get away with it? They, they must have. They really must have. But clearly not. Clearly not. I'll go into jail. Well, I don't know. But. That's wild. That's insane. In the U.S. Now, I'm not saying this is going to happen, you know, next week, next month. Eventually, because the, his, the U.S. government, SEC, Canadian government, their hands are like tentacles, right? And when these tentacles start going, these tentacles really start going deep. So they're going to ask questions to liquidity providers, these prime of prime, top tier liquidity, whoever they are. They're going to say, okay, okay, oh, hey, hey, U.S. government, this is the list of all the Canadian prop firms we're giving liquidity to, and this is a list of all the US prop firms we're giving liquidity to. I'm sorry, gotta have my coffee. Then they're all gonna turn around and say, <clears throat> oh shit, okay, let's go all to them, right? Let's, let's see who else was advertising in Canada, in US, in UK, and giving these services now you can mask these services however you want you can say oh no we're just giving securities we're just giving dividends and this and that man listen a thief that robs a car and a thief that does ethical financial crime at the end of the day they're both thieves 
right? I'm not saying prop firms are thieves, but I'm just giving you some sort of a relation, right? That's what it is. You can you can have a prop firm saying that, okay, you get a payout, the payout comes from subscription, here you go. Or you can mask that as, okay, we're a prop firm, we just do securities, we're giving you dividends. It's the same thing, right? If you think that you can outsmart the U.S. government and you can outsmart Canadian law where they have people there sitting with legit degrees and legit, like... You can't, you can't outsmart these people. They're, they're way smarter. Than, if you think that you're smarter than them, you got to be the most dumbest person alive in the world right now. Listen, one thing the government is going to do is not have you play with them. None of us, okay, can play with the government. At the end of the day, no matter how much we hate the government, how much we dislike political parties or whatever the case may be, Government is still going to be the regulators of everything. They're going to see everything eventually. So I don't know who they were trying to fool. Here's what I think is going to happen. Regulation, which I talked about, is going to come in very, very soon for the prop firms, right? And this is the start of that regulation. This is a snowball effect. And once this snowball keeps rolling, it's going to come after everybody. It's going to come after, um, I'm not going to say it will, but this is just how I see things unfolding, right? I see a lot of prop firms advertising on YouTube, Instagram, Google, and those prop firms are registered in the US, Canada, UK. If you're registered in these three companies, man, you're going to get in trouble really soon. Because as I said, even though you can say, oh, we're safe, nothing's going to happen. Like, you know, like these big companies, TFT, like, uh, like FTMO is safe because FTMO is not registered in the U.S. Anyone registered in the U.S., Canada, you I see. Okay. Okay. So it's like, okay, so U.S., Canada, UK, that makes sense. So FTMO, they're safe because they're not registered there. Aren't they like Czech, Czech Republic, I believe? Correct me if I'm mistaken, but I'm pretty sure it's Czech Republic or one of those European countries. Say word. Okay. okay. You have to put an invisible blanket on from Harry Potter, and you got to hope. You have to hope that they don't catch you. It's going to happen because they came after my Forks funds. What makes you think that they're not going to come after anyone else? Right? What makes you think? Because what makes you think that someone in my forex funds is not going to go to the regulators and say, well, hey guys, there are other problems. They're going to snitch. They're going to snitch. I would not be surprised. I know this is just Raquel's opinion, but I agree with that. Like, what's to say that they won't, even if they, let's say, try to take like some sort of plea deal in court or something, like, Let's say the court says, well, if you tell us more information about this thing, then we'll let you off a little bit easier. They're, they're going to sing like canaries. Come on. What? Okay, I'm not going to watch the rest of the video just because my camera's dying. And I got the gist of it. I got the gist of kind of what happened with this My Forks Fun thing. But if you guys want to watch the rest of either of the videos I um, reacted to, definitely look in the description box. They will be there. The links will be there. But that's just crazy. Like... Bottom line, if you guys want my opinion personally, I mean, whatever, everyone's everyone's going to have their opinion. But in my opinion, if you feel the desire to trade with a prop firm to each their own, as long as you know that is a voluntary assumption of risk, but at least if you take the money that you make, hopefully you do make profits from there and hopefully you don't get, you know, uh, hopefully there's no issues with, you know, manipulation. But let's say you, you make money, you get a payout just start saving it and fund your own account just start if dude like don't just let that money pile up or don't just feel like oh well you know this is my new source of income it'll always be around don't like take that money and put it into an account put it into a couple of different trading accounts like diversify your money spread it out that's just my opinion that's just what i would do if i was like you know a six-figure trader um even trading with any any you know ftmo whatever prop firm just take it out take those payouts and start funding your own accounts and also just make sure that you you know how to trade like obviously that's the main thing i know with these prop firms they have certain rules and stuff so you might have to approach trading on their um like with their accounts differently than you would with your accounts but make sure you make sure your home base is sorted out you know what i mean like make sure you know how to trade and go from there like just be weary you know look left look right don't think that everything will last forever be wise be wise so that's my opinion 
things like this will always happen. Maybe like Raquel said, there will be more regulations around it. I don't see why there wouldn't. I, you know, I feel like I agree with that because my Forex ones got caught and now it could be a snowball effect, but like, come on, just if it's too good to be true, it probably is. And um, yeah, just be careful, guys. Be careful out there trading, even trading your own accounts. Be careful. You know, you never know what could happen with brokers and stuff like that. So it's a bit of a risky business. Um, but yeah, that's that's pretty much my opinion. I don't know, man. This is shady stuff out here. I mean, you can't trust people. That's all I got to say. You can't trust these companies. You can't trust nobody. <laughs> But that being said, you guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you go out there and like I said, just be safe and, you know, do the best you can as a trader, be the best person you can be overall. And until my next video, I hope you have a productive, positive day, week and life. Bye.